your welcome back to the program. We've been on interview, live interview with the Tobies, Sir Gabriel Tamano George Toby, the former Deputy Governor, River State, and Dame Christy Adata Toby, who recently celebrated their 50th marriage anniversary. And the topic has been how they have lived for 50 years. So that those of us who are young in marriage, those who look forward to marriage, and those who are finding difficulties in their marriages may find some help. So, sir, we are back. And um, what uh, the point to start again is tell us on the day of the wedding itself, what, how did you feel? What were the activities like? So that... Uh, well, uh, thank you very much. It, it was, I felt on top of the world and uh, I had all my friends around the place. So, uh, in, in those days, you know, we, we were fashionable. We, we had very good suits we made for, for the wedding. And uh, I also had a beautiful car for young men, uh, a, Thanos, a Ford Thanos 17M, which we used. Um, but but the, the thing is that it was a realization that our dream had come true. And uh, when the late uh, Ryan Reverend Hubert Afaya uh, decided to celebrate the marriage, and of course, with quite a lot of clergymen, you know, of course, my father in law was in at his best that day. Um, so we, it was a glorious day, uh, which we live to remember. And uh, it was also um, one of the most memorable days in my life. Starting a life with a girl you loved, the girl you liked, uh, having endured one year of uh, punishment uh, after taking all my drinks and everything we gave to them, uh, I, I thought that eventually we have conquered. So we, we, we celebrated it. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, Ma, how did you, can you stretch your mind back yes. and try to recapture some emotional moments? Yes. The day before, uh, with my bridesmaids, we were excited. And my father and mother had come all the way from Joss and um, we were giggling, talking, making noise like any uh, group of girls would do. Then my father just shouted and called me, I came. He said, you're a very foolish girl. Hey, I didn't know what I did. I said, Daddy, what have I done? Do you know that today, tonight, is the last night you're going to bear my name? By this time tomorrow, you'll have signed off my name and you're no more going to answer my name. It doesn't mean anything to you. You're going to lose your freedom as my daughter and go to another place. So we started crying. My bridesmaids, all of us, were crying. So my mother came, my dear, what is this you're doing to this girl now? She said, you go. Go away. All of you, are, they are not reasoning. Go away. He was, he was pained. He was losing me. I'm sure he still wanted me married. But he didn't want, I don't know how he would have kept me and yet got me married. I don't know. That's why he kept you for one year after the, <laughs> after the gila drink. <laughs> so, but on the um, wedding day, now when I see girls dress up, I feel like uh, rewinding the clock backwards so that they can dress me up with all the colors on my face, on my hair. They just, I just dressed up, they use iron, stretch my hair, and that's all. And no eyebrow pencil, no lipstick. Now I rub the lipstick. My father told me, you are beautiful enough, you don't need any makeup. It's makeup for those who are not beautiful. You don't need a makeup. And I believed him. 
and I thought he was right. So even on my wedding day, there was no lipstick, no eyebrow pencil, nothing. Plain. It was later on, my friends would come and say, come, it's true, we didn't even rub your eyebrow pencil. But that aside, I God. thought, at last, I had gotten the boy of my soul. So I was relaxed, I was happy. I thought, because from what my father now told me the previous day, I now said, oh, it, I now knew I was actually going to make my own home. He thought he was calling me, but he gave me a message. So I now knew I was going to start my own home. I now started imagining how my home will look like. How I started grandiose just plans of a home of a young couple and the children around and all. So I was excited. Mm -hmm. But that was a beautiful experience. I live through every year we have an anniversary because we do celebrate it in small, you know, we don't really, only when we'll have 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, that's how we started. But earlier we just take a few friends, we we'll go to a restaurant or make some nice meals in the home. So since then, I have a lot to thank God for. Oh, praise God. Um, since you've been coming along, <coughs> definitely as human beings, you must have had some challenges. What is the message, do you, what road can you say your Christian faith has played? Because you have come from the vicarage, he is a Christian activist, and a uh, very busy young man as a child of God. What role has the, your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ actually played in ensuring that your marriage remains solid? Uh, well, we are all right until uh, we lost our first son. Uh, he died uh, during the Civil War. We married 66, 67 the war started. Mm -hmm. uh, we lost him 68. Uh, and uh, I was shaken. I was saying, why me? And he would preach to me. I said, why do whose child should die? Then he would preach to me. And uh, those coddling and preaching and praying sustained me. Then later we had a beam and uh, just continue like that. So each time I see my uh, his mates, those that attended that retire with me, those that had the baby with me, uh, like this year said, ah, <coughs> if uh, Dinya had been alive, he would have been 49 years old this year. You know, I, th those are the only kind of things. Uh, it touched my nerves, my soul. Hmm. But it didn't shake my faith, fortunately, because uh, each time, in the early time when I was in my moods, he will talk to me, he will preach to me, he will pray, and even with the tears in my eyes, he will still pray and say, Amen. Hmm. And uh, I think. Uh, that was the hardest thing that ever happened to me. Hallelujah. So. Yeah, I, I'd like to come in. Yes. The, basically, uh, any foundation that is made on Christ lasts. Mm. And I found that. And you know, during our wedding, uh, the, the Bishop of Aya gave a sermon, which I always remember. And he said, if this marriage is going to, be la is going to last, 
it must be built on Christ. And the formula I have is that you, Gabriel, Christ first, Christy second, Gabriel third. And you, Christy, Christ first, Gabriel second, Christy last. Hmm. Now, that's the formula he gave. And, and I found that throughout our marriage, um, a, anything, what, what's we think of a Christian upbringing and think of the fact that Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior has not let us down. I mean, he built us up mm. and he got this marriage on. Yes, we lost our first baby. He gave us another one. But he didn't diminish us. He, he, and, and because of that, even if we have any disagreement, anything to feel bad about and so on. It doesn't last because you look at it. I, and for me, I turn back and said, well, if Christ can forgive me, I mean, what is it that somebody would do that I cannot forgive? Mm. Then you go back to a, a prayer, a, a lost prayer, and you have a condition that is precedent to your getting forgiveness from God. God is clear. And so if you look at all those things, and you still think that you want to go it your own way and so on, then it just breaks down. That's right. So it's, it's in the relationship with marriage, but it's also in the relationship with people. Mm -hmm. If you're going to get along with people. And I always say, even in our married relationship, I say, look, everybody's got a fault. And if you go and start pontificating on your friend's fault, and he pontificates on your own fault, then mm -hmm. you never can go. Never pretend that though you're the best of the world, so you have nothing. But there must be something that attracted you to your wife when you were courting. Look at that thing. Always hold that. If anything else first, that one will fit. So hold it. And if you're going to have a friend and there is something that binds you when you're a friend and something starts coming, leave the, the bad one, take the good one. <laughs> and that will keep you. <laughs> okay, sir. Now, um, we'd like our viewers to know how old you were when you got married. And uh, what is your recommendation for people of this generation? Because some are not employed. And possibly they are of the marriageable age. Some are struggling with so many things at the time. So, is it something that can be delayed purposely or they shouldn't really delay it? Is it a good thing to get married when one is uh, almost old? <laughs> <laughs>